Welcome back everybody. In this house we like to play a lot of board games and I recently had the opportunity to review this horse racing game from Granier. The box itself is nothing special. It's just corrugated cardboard but it does have a nice color photo on the front and back letting you know what's inside. The real star of the show is the game itself. When I choose a board game I gravitate towards those that look fun and to me looking fun means high quality components that kind of resemble toys. I think that something that looks fun gets you in the frame of mind that it will be fun and it entices new players to join. The Granier horse racing game comes with 11 solid metal sculpted horses in three different colors and I think they're gorgeous. You also get this canvas bag to store the horses between games. The track itself is solid pine the edges are rounded and the surface is completely smooth. There is paint on the track that is brilliant and bright with crisp edges and no color bleeding. There are holes drilled into the track that the horses move down. The holes are very well cut and provide no resistance as your horse moves down the track. You get two decks of cards and four dice. Rounding out the package is the instruction manual. This is everything you need to play except for nickels. Yes, this is a gambling game. You wouldn't have to use nickels. You could use poker chips. You could use beans, whatever you want. But if you use nickels as they suggest, then you are risking a maximum of $2 per game. The horse racing game supports 2 to 11 players. I'll be setting up for the two-player version. I already have my stacks of coins here. And the first thing you do is remove all the aces, kings, and jokers from the cards and then shuffle the deck, which I've already done. Now I'm going to evenly distribute the cards to the best of my ability between two players. Now I should have 44 cards in the deck, so each player gets 22 cards. The cards represent your interest in the horse, your ownership of the horse. I don't think there is any strategic advantage to keeping this information secret. I have all the cards turned up and sorted by number. Having an interest in the horse means you are risking money if the horse fares poorly or you are sharing in the prize if the horse wins. For example, horse six is owned by players one and two. However, player one has three sixes, player two only has one. Player one is risking three times the amount of money than player two. However, if horse six wins, player one will get three quarters of the prize, whereas player two only gets one quarter of the prize. Prior to the race, there are four elimination rounds called scratches. For each round, you roll two dice. In this case, I rolled a six and a four. That means that horse number 10 goes back one row. For round number one, the penalty for going back a row is five cents per card you own. Player number one has one ten. Player number two has ten tens. Player number one puts one nickel into the prize pot. Player number two puts three nickels into the prize pot. And the next roll continues. For round number 10, you're risking 10 cents per card. I have rolled a one and a four. Horse number five goes back two rows. Player one has two cards for horse number five, as does player two. So player one gives four nickels into the pool. Player two also gives four nickels into the pool. And the next round continues. Horse number four has been rolled. So we go back three rows. In this case, we are penalized three nickels for every card we hold. That means, let's see, player two has three fours, player one has four fours. Player one will give three nickels into the pot. Player two has to give 12. I don't even know if I have 12. 
I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, now we're down to the, the fourth elimination round. Roll the dice. And we are at number eight. Player or horse number eight goes back four rows. And now the penalty is four nickels per card. Player one has three eights. Player one has to put 12 nickels into the pot. So the pot is getting large. The stakes are high. Now the race begins. You roll the dice until a horse wins. If you roll the number of a horse that has been eliminated, you just ignore it and go on with the next horse. So let's see what happens in round number one. We have five. Five has been eliminated. We ignore the roll. Next roll. All right, horse number three. The race finally gets off to a start. Horse number three advances one. Now, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but there are a different number of holes per horse. I think that it just has to do with the odds that it's actually going to be rolled. As you can see, the six, seven, and eight. Well, the seven has the highest number of holes, and then they... Uh, are reduced by the time you get to 2 and 12 you only need three rolls to win the race so let's see who goes next a we have nine nine goes forward one 11 11 goes up one six six goes up one we have seven seven Advances one. 12. 12 is in the race. We go up one. Three goes up another one. Three is in the lead. Seven. Seven advances one. Now, seven, like I said, has the most number of horses. So, three is still in the lead. Two has not even left the starting line yet. Three advances again. All right, the race is heating up now. Six. Six goes to the next row, so it pulls slightly out of number seven. Seven again. All right, seven is catching up. Seven has some work to do. Seven again. Seven goes to the next row. Seven again. Okay, the, the race is picking up. Seven is showing some competition. We've got six. Six advances. Seven again. Seven is almost neck and neck with three. Six. Six goes up one. We're leaving nine, eleven, and twelve in the dust. Six again. Got some competition for seven. Seven advances. Seven is in the lead. Six advances. Neck and neck with seven. Seven's in the lead. We have nine. Nine finally gets going again. Seven. Seven's pulling ahead again. Seven again. Seven. Serious competition for three. Three's not out of the race yet, though. Seven is in is taken off. Six. Six is not giving up yet. Twelve. Twelve is pulling ahead. Look at that. Eleven. Eleven is trying to. Well, he's eleven's ahead of nine, so let's see what happens here. Seven. Seven is still in the lead. Seven is determined to win. We have seven again. All right, folks, it's starting to look bad for number two. Two. Two takes off. Finally gets out of the starting line. And we have, we have seven again. Seven is inching closer to the finish line. It looks like it might be wrapping up. Seven again. Two more and seven wins. We have seven again. Oh, seven is just sniffing that finish line. Nine. Nine advances. Eleven. Eleven is not giving up. Uh, 
Uh, 12 could still pull this off with one lucky roll here. Two. Two advances neck and neck with 12. It's it's two, 12 or seven. Either any of those horses will win this if, with one more roll. 11. 11 goes up one. Uh, nine. Nine advances. Still behind everybody else. 11 advances. Ooh, 11 is a... 11. <laughs> okay, so two... 7, 11, or 12, any of those horses, if, if one roll and they win the game. 6, 6 advances. Good to see, good to hear from 6 again. 6 again. 6 is not giving up. 7 wins. But it was a close race. So that's how they and then whoever uh let's let's go ahead and divvy up the prizes. Well, we've got a uh, 50 50 split. So, whoever owns horse number seven would take home the entire pot here. And um, as you can see, in, in this case, no one's ahead. <laughs> Everybody's got their money back, basically. But as you increase the number of players, you will, that dynamic will change. This is a very simple game, the rules are easily taught. It doesn't take long to play, and you, uh, I, I, I was playing by myself, and I thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, you, you can, you can, if if you let yourself get into the game, you you feel the odds of winning. Uh, horses coming from behind, uh, horses just hanging there doing nothing. Um, it's, it does it does have some excitement doesn't require a lot of thought um i like this game and i this is i know that i i've seen other implementations of this game uh this is a fine addition this is something you could easily leave set up on a coffee table or whatever and play casually you play this at a party um you play this with kids kids would enjoy this as well what i like about this game is that it keeps you engaged especially in a lower player count where you are invested in the interest of most or all of the horses. As you increase player count, you're going to be less interested in some of the horses winning, especially if you are in an 11 player game and all of your horses get eliminated, then it's less exciting for that player. However, I don't know how likely that is to happen. I like that the odds of the dice actually coming up are reflected in the number of holes in the racetrack so that even the lower likelihood horses like 2 and 12 still have an excellent chance to win. As you can see, we were just one roll away from winning on both 2 and 12 and 11. And of course, horse number 7 won, but it wasn't. An inevitability. The only thing I might suggest is to include one of these dice rolling trays. They're not necessary, but they do keep the dice from rolling off the table, and that's kind of nice. However, they are widely available and inexpensive, so you can always add it. And this particular design unsnaps so that you can lay it flat in the box, and that would be perfect for a game like this. They do include two decks of cards, and I appreciate that. However, they are just generic playing cards and not designed specifically for this game. So the, if you wanted to take this to the extra mile, instead of jacks and queens, you could print 11 and 12. And then you wouldn't have to do that little translation in your head, which I agree isn't a big deal. But any criticisms I have of this game are minor. This is a fun game. This is a finely produced game. I don't even want to compare this to other games because it really depends what you're looking for. Do you enjoy the theme? Do you think this is the complexity of your target audience? I think this is a great game to have in your collection and I do not hesitate to recommend it. I would give this a five out of five stars. Thanks for stopping by.